so so her doctor so her enemy this is certainly not the first time we come across the word enemy in the poem the poet had spoken of the enemy earlier in the poem and the relevant lines if i remember correctly go thus peel off the napkin oh my enemy then the enemy was unnamed the anonymous enemy was probably a male antagonist probably the husband of the speaker probably a personification of the entire world because for the suicide victim the world the entire world is the enemy be that as it may here the identity of the enemy need not rest on speculations for the poet says her doctor so her enemy it is clear that the doctor is the enemy why is the doctor the enemy because he pulls back the speaker from the embrace of death death is the lover of the speaker and she almost united with death but the union was shattered and the speaker was freed from the embrace from the clutches from the hands of death by the efforts by the efforts of the doctor anyone who prevents the union of lovers is seen as an enemy by the lovers it is in that spirit probably that the speaker calls the doctor her enemy but it has to be remembered that sylvia plath uses the german spelling instead of the english spelling she writes doctor not doctor as if to put an end to any doubts that we might have she adds a her to it it is not mr doctor it is her doctor her is the german equivalent of mr and the word doctor has been given a german spelling what is one to make of all this probably sylvia plath has in mind the doctor who the german doctor who visits the concentration camps and carries out experiments in torture on his jewish victims that is why the poet uses the german spelling of doctor and prefixes the word with the german word her which means mister critics have wondered why sylvia plat was so much obsessed with concentration camps and why she should see the doctor who saves her life which is almost lost in a suicide attempt as an enemy well life to sylvia plath is torture and the doctor is responsible for bringing her back from death and thus reviving the torture called life so he is naturally the enemy critics ask why sylvia plath was so much obsessed with concentration camps she had never been to a concentration camp what made her use the trope for the concentration concentration camp so repeatedly in her poetry the best explanation the best answer is that for sylvia plath life itself was a concentration camp having called the doctor the enemy having abused the doctor the poet now decides to make up for it in a way 
decides to compensate for it in a way by taking a more reasonable approach, by taking a more nuanced approach. After all is said and done, the poet knows that the doctor has saved her life. And but for the heroic efforts of the doctor, she would not be existing now. She did call the doctor her enemy. But she knows in her heart of hearts that the doctor is not merely her enemy. The poet says, I am your opus. Opus means work. The speaker is the creation of the doctor in a way because but for the doctor's work, but for the doctor's efforts, she would not be living now. She would not be existing now. I am your opus. She is the work of the doctor. Just as a poem is the work of a poet or a painting is the work of a painter. I am your valuable. The doctor's career is built on the numerous patients whose lives he has saved. And so the patients are valuable to the doctor. If there were no patients, there would be no doctor. The more the number of patients he saves, the better the doctor he supposedly becomes. The pure gold baby that melts to a shriek. The speaker thinks that she's very innocent. She's very innocent. She's like a baby. She has a good heart. That precisely is the problem. She has a good heart and she lives in a wicked world. She is the pure gold baby. Patients frequently behave like babies. They are irrational. They cry. They shriek. They make unreasonable demands. The pure gold baby that melts to a shriek. I turn and burn. Burn? Perhaps the speaker sees herself as a witch who is burned at stake. A witch who is burned at the stake of life. The stake is life. She is burned at stake. And the stake represents life. Or perhaps she sees herself as a phoenix who is burned to ash and who comes out of the ash, is reborn from the ash. It is significant that in the introduction supplied to the poem, Sylvia Plath called the speaker a phoenix. And you must remember that this introduction was supplied by the poet to the poem when she was invited in 1962 by the British Broadcasting Corporation to read the poem. This is what she said in the introduction. She, I quote, she is the phoenix, unquote.